J. Jonah Jameson, the renowned journalist from the Daily Bugle, has exposed Peter Parker's true identity as Spider-Man to the entire world. Simultaneously, Parker is framed for the death of Mysterio and a devastating incident in London. Faced with a hostile crowd in the media, Parker and Michelle Jones must flee to seek refuge in Parker's apartment. There, they are joined by May Parker and Happy Hogan, who reveal that they have ended their relationship. Before long, the United States Department of Damage Control apprehends them, along with Ned Leeds, for questioning and detainment. In their defense, Parker enlists the help of Matt Murdock as his lawyer, successfully having his criminal charges dismissed. However, the aftermath of the controversy takes its toll as Parker, Jones, and Leeds find themselves rejected by every college they apply to, including MIT, as they attempt to resume their senior year at Midtown High. Parker seeks help from Dr. Strange at the New York Sanctum to restore the secret identity of Spider-Man and secure his friend's admission to MIT. Against Wong's advice, Strange tries to cast the spell using the powerful runes of Cough Cole. However, Parker continuously interrupts the spell by making specific requests to exempt certain individuals close to him. The spell becomes increasingly unstable, prompting Strange to contain it. Furious with Parker for not consulting college administrators beforehand, Strange expels him from the sanctum. Desperate, Parker reaches out to Flash Thompson, who has been accepted into MIT, and learns about an administrator heading to the Alexander Hamilton Bridge, where they hope to appeal their applications alongside Jones and Leeds. Out of nowhere, Parker finds himself unexpectedly attacked by Dr. Octopus, who appears to have a personal connection to him. With a firm grip, Dr. Octopus forcefully tears off a section of the Iron Spider armor, allowing the nanites to merge with his own mechanical tentacles. Just as Dr. Octopus prepares for another assault, Spider-Man unveils his face, which confuses and perplexes his adversary. Utilizing the nanites within his suit, Spider-Man seizes control over Dr. Octopus' tentacles and swiftly saves the MIT administrator from perilously plummeting off the bridge. Deeply grateful for the rescue, the administrator offers his assistance in securing admissions for Parker and his friends at the prestigious institution. Green Goblin makes a dramatic entrance, launching an assault on Spider-Man. However, both Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus find themselves suddenly transported into the Sanctum, where Dr. Strange detains them along with Lizard. Strange reveals to Parker that these villains, including Dr. Octopus, Lizard, and Green Goblin, hail from alternate dimensions within the vast multiverse. The failed spell inadvertently drew them into this reality because of their knowledge of Spider-Man's true identity. To prevent further disruptions, Strange seals the spell within the Machina Decatavis, a powerful mystical containment device. Parker is enlisted to aid in the search and apprehension of these otherworldly intruders, receiving a magical enhancement for his suit. Alongside Jones and Leeds, Spider-Man discovers Electro lurking outside the city. Caught off guard, Electro launches an attack, overpowering Spider-Man. However, Sandman intervenes, shielding the hero from harm. Together, they manipulate the power lines, revitalizing Electro's physical form. As Electro is transported to the Sanctum, Sandman mistakenly believes Spider-Man to be responsible for his demise but is swiftly captured before seeking revenge. Meanwhile, Norman Osborn, desperate to escape his Green Goblin persona, shatters his mask and seeks refuge at a F-E-A-S-T facility. With May's assistance, Spider-Man locates Osborn and brings him to the Sanctum. There, Osborn, Dr. Octopus, and Electro come to the realization that they perished and were subsequently resurrected by the spell. Returning to their respective dimensions would mean facing certain death once again. In their conversation, Strange reveals to Spider-Man the grim fate awaiting the three visitors as they confront their respective Spider-Man in their own realities. He proposes using the Machina to reverse the spell and send them back, preserving the delicate balance of the multiverse. However, Spider-Man holds on to hope that they can be redeemed and spared from their tragic destinies. Seizing an opportunity, he takes possession of the Machina and makes a daring escape. Determined to retrieve the Machina and convince Spider-Man of the immense consequences at stake, Strange pursues him into the mirror dimension. In a surprising move, Spider-Man ensnares Strange in a complex web pattern and acquires his sling ring, allowing him to return to the real world. Passing the ring to Leeds and entrusting the Machina to Jones, Spider-Man sets the prisoners free from their confinement. Taking them to Hogan's condominium, Spider-Man embarks on his mission to cure the multiversal refugees. He focuses on Dr. Octopus first, utilizing a cutting-edge Stark Industries fabricator to engineer a new inhibitor chip, restoring his higher brain function. Additionally, Spider-Man installs an energy siphon in Electro, specifically designed to extract and neutralize his powers. However, their plans are interrupted when the Green Goblin persona takes control of Osborne's body, persuading Electro to remove the siphon and retaining his abilities. 
In a shocking turn of events, Electro steals an arc reactor and unleashes its power, causing Octavius to be forcefully expelled from the building. Lizard, Sandman, and Electro seize the opportunity to escape. Meanwhile, Green Goblin viciously attacks Spider-Man, hurling him to the ground floor. As chaos ensues, May steps in and attempts to administer an antidote to Green Goblin, but it proves ineffective. In a devastating act, Green Goblin strikes May with his Goblin Glider. Moments later, Spider-Man finds himself surrounded by the aftermath of an explosive encounter as Green Goblin hurls two pumpkin bombs. Despite his efforts to shield May, the explosions inflict grave injuries. Amidst the chaos, May imparts a final lesson to her nephew, reminding him of the enduring responsibility that comes with great power. As the authorities close in, Spider-Man desperately tries to save May, but tragically, his efforts are in vain as she succumbs to her injuries. Hogan arrives at the scene, only to be swiftly apprehended by the approaching authorities. Overwhelmed by grief, Spider-Man escapes, tormented by feelings of guilt and the relentless gaslighting coverage from Jameson. Concerned by his silence, Jones contemplates activating the Machina, but Leeds accidentally opens a portal with the sling ring. Hoping to locate Spider-Man, they spot a figure resembling their own Spider-Man on the other side, calling out to him. However, they soon realize that this Spider-Man is not their own but an alternate version who battled the Lizard and Electro. Leeds tries again, summoning yet another Peter Parker from a different universe, one who fought against Green Goblin, Octavius, and Sandman. Finally, they find their Spider-Man standing alone atop Midtown and try to console him in the wake of May's passing. However, he is too consumed by his own mistakes to be comforted. As he contemplates using the Machina to send the multiversal travelers back, the other two Parkers share their own tales of loss and bitterness, helping him come to terms with his pain and realize that he is not alone. Encouraged by the newfound hope, Spider-Man resolves to follow through with his initial intention, to find a way to cure the villains. The group, consisting of the Parkers, Jones, and Leeds, seeks refuge in a laboratory within their school. In this makeshift workspace, they collaborate to develop the necessary antidotes. One Parker formulates an antiserum specifically designed for the Green Goblin, while another Parker focuses on recreating the Lizard antidote to restore him to his original state. Simultaneously, Spider-Man dedicates himself to preparing the cures for Sandman and Electro. Once the antidotes are ready, Leeds uses his portal abilities to transport them to the Statue of Liberty, while Jones and Leeds remain behind to provide support in the laboratory. Spider-Man initiates a plan to confront Lizard, Electro, and Sandman by using the Machina as bait, luring them to the location. As the battle ensues on the scaffolding, the Spider-Men struggle to work together efficiently, resulting in their adversaries gaining the upper hand. Recognizing the need for coordination, Spider-Man takes charge, leveraging his experience from his time with the Avengers. To avoid confusion, each Spider-Man adopts a unique codename, Peter 1, Peter 2, Osborne Spider-Man, and Peter 3, Electro Spider-Man. They strategize to focus on curing one enemy at a time, starting with Sandman. With Lizard restrained, Peter 3 retrieves the cure for Sandman, passing it to Peter 1, who successfully administers the cure to Peter 2, ultimately neutralizing Marco. The trio of Spider-Men engage in a fierce battle against Electro in an attempt to retrieve the arc reactor. However, Electro's enhanced abilities from the power source make him a formidable opponent, overpowering the three heroes. Meanwhile, Lizard breaks free and threatens Jones and Leeds in the laboratory, prompting Peter 1 to confront him and protect his friends. Utilizing Leeds' sling ring, Peter 1 manages to force Lizard to shatter a vial containing the antidote, reverting him back to his human form, the scientist Kurt Connors. Unintentionally summoning Strange to the scene, Connors' transformation confirms the success of Peter 1's non-violent approach. Strange retrieves the Machina and Sling Ring from Leeds. As Peter 2 and Peter 3 struggle against Electro, Dr. Octavius arrives and assists them by extracting the arc reactor, effectively neutralizing Electro's powers. In a moment of reconciliation, Peter 3 finds common ground with Dylan, while Peter 2 shares a heartfelt reunion with Octavius. Peter 1 returns to Strange's side, ready to use the Machina and send everyone back to their respective universes. Unexpectedly, Green Goblin launches a surprise attack and manages to snatch the Machina, but Octavius and Strange swiftly reclaim it. Unbeknownst to them, Green Goblin had concealed a deadly pumpkin bomb within the device. The explosion ruptures the contained spell, creating a rift in the fabric of reality and opening it to the vastness of the multiverse. Amidst the chaos, Jones plummets from the Statue of Liberty. Peter 1 leaps into action to save her, only to be forcibly pushed away by Green Goblin. It is Peter 3 who swoops in to rescue Jones, his eyes welling up with sorrow as the memory of Gwen Stacy's tragic fate resurfaces.
As the sun rises, Peter I faces off against Green Goblin in a fierce showdown. Consumed by vengeance, he unleashes a brutal assault, intent on delivering a fatal blow with his glider. However, Peter II intervenes, preventing the unthinkable. In a cruel twist, this diversion leaves Peter I vulnerable to a treacherous stab in the back from Green Goblin. Peter I administers the antiserum to cure Osborne, eradicating the Green Goblin persona. He is struck with remorse upon seeing Peter II's injury, realizing the consequences of his violent actions. Meanwhile, Strange struggles to maintain the stability of the universe as intruders from other realities prepare to invade. Peter I convinces Strange to cast a new spell to make everyone forget his identity, in an attempt to repair the damage. After the spell is enacted, Peter I shares a heartfelt moment with his alternate selves, who inspire him to continue his heroic journey as Spider-Man. With the rifts in the universe restored, Peter II, Peter III, Dylan, Octavius, Osborne, Marco, and Connors are transported back to their respective universes. Spider-Man bids farewell to Leeds and Jones, promising to return and help them remember him in the future. As Spider-Man departs, Strange unleashes the spell, wiping the knowledge of Parker's existence from the entire world. A couple of weeks pass, and the holiday season arrives. Parker makes an attempt to reconnect with his friends who are heading to MIT, but when he sees the lingering scars on Jones's face, he decides against it, not wanting to burden them further. He pays a visit to May's grave, offering his heartfelt respects, and finds solace in the company of Hogan, who, despite their shared loss, feels like a stranger to him now. Determined to forge a new path, Parker moves into a solitary apartment and dedicates himself to studying for his GED. When his phone alerts him to criminal activity, he improvises a simpler suit and resumes his role as Spider-Man, undeterred by external distractions, and embracing the ideals of community service and responsibility instilled in him by May. In a scene during the credits, Eddie Brock and his symbiote, displaced from their own universe, find themselves sitting at a bar, engaging in a conversation with the bartender about the existence of other super-powered individuals and the impact of the blip. Contemplating how they can protect this unfamiliar world, they are abruptly transported back to their own universe, unaware that a small fragment of the symbiote is left behind on the bar counter. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And subscribe for more insightful movie analysis. Stay connected with us as we explore the fascinating world of cinema.